Hello and uh, welcome to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh, I'm your host Dave and joining me today is Carrie. Hi. Uh, who's going to be our special guest. Uh, yeah. Painting up some Co terrain. Co-host. Filling in since uh, Rick is out <laughs> in uh, Reno. More Reno, Nevada. Um, there's not snow on the ground. So <laughs> yeah. there is here. I don't know. Um, is it up in the hills? I don't, Reno's flat. Reno's in the is desert. It? Okay. So. Well, you never know. Overnight, maybe. Yeah. But uh, yeah, out there for Gamma. Yep. So he's uh, going to be having a lot of fun. Um, out there with Johnny as well. So we've got Leona running the uh, booth. Can you say hi, Leona? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so this will be the first time that I'm also trying to run the chat. Okay. Maybe not run the chat, but Interact occasionally glance the at the yeah, chat. Yeah. Um, so it should be fun. Um, you notice we don't have our big box of Legion uh, Star Wars Legion right. today, uh, it's because that's out at Gamma as well. Yep. Along with all but uh, two of the painted miniatures that we've got, because we're uh, working today not on minis, but on terrain. Yay. It should be cool. I've um, never painted, look, I've, I've never... only painted like three minis before anyway. <laughs> and so all of them with us? Yeah, that's all great. of them with you guys. That's great. So um, th now we're heading into uh, terrain, which should be interesting. Yeah, it'll, um, it'll be definitely cool for you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Carrie uh, is putting together a book at the moment. Yes, the Overstreet Guide to Collecting uh, Tabletop Games. Tabletop uh, games. I yeah. finally put together the page map, so I actually know <laughs> how much of the book I have left to actually work on. Um, and I'm way further ahead than I thought I was. Yes. So I was like, oh, just sort of like this sigh of relief of like, I thought I had just so much left to do. And I do really have a lot left to do um, as far as the text, right. but I'm just like, just like, Oh, okay, I can actually exhale a little bit because I was like really on edge. I was like, oh my God, how much of this do I have left? <laughs> and once I finally put it in the page map and color coded like yep. what text is done and what's in layout and what, what do I actually have left to do, I was like, oh, okay. That's good. I'm good. I'm, I'm much better off than I thought I was. I'm comfortable. I can go and spend an hour and uh, hang out and paint terrain with yeah, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. That should be absolutely. great. Absolutely. And if anybody has any questions about the, the book and what's going to be in it, Pop, pop in the chat, and I'm I'm happy to answer anything while we're working on these. Don't do it immediately, immediately now because I haven't found it yet. <laughs> I'll be finding it in a few minutes. But uh, so yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, well, so talking about terrain today. Uh, if you want to repeat the beginning, because I assume it's not live. It's live now. Oh. Oh, it's live now. Redo the start. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Okay. No worries. <laughs> <It's my fault. laughs> so this is a. Uh, Leona's first time as well without uh, without Johnny and oh, Rick here, okay. so we're all a little bit uh, bit nervous, a bit skittish. We're not doing things. Um, so are we live? Live? Yeah. We're we're live oh, now. Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. Well, then I'll actually bring up the chat. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. So okay, cool. Oh, there we are. Absolutely cool. <laughs> it's working. We're we're functioning now. But anyway, we're painting terrain from Star Wars Legion. <laughs> it's gonna be a good time. I don't know what was caught on the, the live feed before, but this is Dave and I'm Carrie, and we're painting Star Wars terrain. There we go. Yay. That's us up on the screen. Awesome. So yeah, we're going to be painting some uh, terrain for uh, Legion today. Uh, I thought I'd go through and um, just give a quick rundown of uh, what terrain's about and what you can make yeah, it out of. Yeah, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Right, yeah. So. so um, for tabletop war games, um, moving around on the board uh, is is one thing that all of the miniatures do, uh, or can do, uh, and using ter different bits of scenery, different bits of terrain, buildings, um, natural pieces of terrain like rivers and uh, trees and right. hedges, that kind of thing, are all um, things that it can impact how models move, how they shoot, how they fight. Uh, all that sort of stuff on the uh, tabletop. So for a game like Star Wars uh, Legion, which has a really sort of dense universe around it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so much world building has already been done. So we've, we get to see in all of the movies and all the shows uh, what different worlds look like and what different buildings right. and Right, so when it comes to styles. terrain for Legion, yep. 
basically, I'm assuming what you're trying to do is sort of emulate the look of certain areas of the film. I like, think, yeah. Yeah, that's what most people are going to do, is try and do, try and do like, Endor right, or Tatooine, Tatooine or Naboo or, yeah. or that sort of thing. Uh, but I think because the, the universe is so large, there's a lot of opportunity to create something completely new. Oh, that's true. Um, so that's, that's pretty exciting as well. But uh, you've so got a box of weird stuff over there. I do have a lot of weird stuff here. So I'm going to start reaching into bits and pieces. I'm going to start with some commercially available stuff first. So I'm going to reach over to this box here All right. and pull out a couple of pieces of terrain. Okay. I'll put this one out the front. Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Let's use. I'll get the camera right in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so this one here is made from uh, pieces from the um, Mantic uh, Battle Zones oh, okay. kit. Uh, it's so very sort of standard, futuristic sci-fi. Yeah, very much like so. Like you could probably say, oh, this is like an area of the Death Star, because it just sort of inherently looks like a spaceship. Yep, there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's the obviously the the regular sizes, mm -hmm. the angular corners, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, for sure, you can use this for, for pretty much anything and right. Mantic sort of sell it as a sci-fi terrain set. Uh, this one I painted up for use with uh, a game by from Ninja Division called Relic Knights. Okay. Uh, so that's why it's sort of fairly bright and it's got the, the bright oranges and, and that sort of thing nice. on it. Uh, it's a little bit grungy around the bottom. So it's this kind of thing around the, uh, the bottom of the building that we'll be trying to replicate on another building today. Yep. Uh, so, but this is all, all of these pieces are all uh, plastic, um, plastic squares, um, now, do plastic you just, connectors. Do you just, does this just click together or do you actually need some hardware to... They can click together. I'm going to uh, sort of show the underside of this on the, uh, well, let's see if we can get the right angle there. there we go. Go. Okay, so you can see all of these squares here and these little pieces here are little clips that can click it together. Uh, this one has been glued oh, okay. so that it's uh, a little more sturdy. Stable. Stable. Yeah. Yep. But uh, you could, for this particular set, you could um, just sort of click it, it together and then take it apart between games oh, and okay. rearrange it and try something different. Uh, so yeah, that's all very much possible with that. This is another sort of much smaller example of that kind of thing, uh, which is great as a, uh, just a small piece. Give us the, uh, actually the Stormtrooper. Let's get the Stormtrooper there. Storm there we go. So we can see on the table there and get an idea of the, the scale. scale. Yeah. Yep. But you can imagine this sort of thing on a Imperial landing pad as a buffer. Oh, that's so if they're cool. landing yeah. pads out here, um, a buffer between so people can be working behind here or put equipment right. or supplies. And that then sort if of you're thing. playing playing any game that has like a cover system or something like that, yep. obviously this would then provide cover of some sort. So exactly, yeah. I'll pop in chat real real quick. Um, oh. Mini Painting Studio says, no Rick and Johnny. Oh, you mean the A-Team is finally here. Yeah! <laughs> Go Josh, thanks, mate. Um, <laughs> hello to Keith. Um, hello to Levi. Um, Levi says, wish I had the time to stick around. Yes, the work. Take care, and I'll try to catch the next one. So yeah, come, come back on Thursday. I probably won't be here, but he will. I will, so. be, yeah. We'll be, we'll be doing terrain as well. Uh, but again, uh, I guess after the show, it'll be available yeah, somewhere. You can always watch it um, <laughs> always uh, watch. on a replay on Facebook, and I guess they put most of them up on YouTube, YouTube. as well. I don't think um, so. On the Game yeah. Trade Media channel. Yeah. But uh, the next thing on the show is uh, some stuff that was sent to us by uh, Horizon uh, Creation 3D. Okay, cool. Pop, uh, a little, little card under there. But this is... Th uh, that looks 3D printed. It is 3D printed. Uh, so, check out Horizon Creation 3D. Uh, there are a lot of uh, folks who have been messing around with uh, digital sculpting yep. and 3D printing for a while, um, but doing it particularly for uh, sci-fi games and for um, other sort of like sci-fi fandoms. So right. There's a, a lot of stuff uh, out there for Star Wars. Oh, I imagine, yeah. So we've got this piece here, which is like a crazy sort of generator kind of look. I always push it the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. Um, so a crazy sort of generator look. Uh, there's a little thing that could be a comms tower. 
some sort of uh, relay station. A lot of cool stuff. And then this piece, this one is uh, there's a number of pieces that are on this. I guess a little tray. Yeah. So it's a printed tray, and then everything's been printed up on top of that. So if you wanted to work with this, essentially you could snap this, snap, snap this out. Right. Trim around the edges uh, with your knife, and you're good to go. So it looks like we've got here sort of two barricades. I won't pull it out, pull out yet, because it's uh, Rick's. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Tear up Rick's, like <laughs> Rick's things Rick's while he's stuff. out in Reno. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, this is a great little uh, barricade there. Uh, it'd be excellent on uh, on walkways, like elevated walkways. Okay, yeah, we'll absolutely. That as well. No, that's super cool. But I so mean, I I'm a big fan of sort of how the rise of 3D printing has um, been such a boon to so many creative things. Like, yep. obviously, you've got the stuff with minis. Um, I've seen a few companies pop up where they're like, oh, we'll print your specific character from your D&D oh, yeah. campaign. Um, that, that sort of deal. I've actually got, I've got a 3D printed um, prop for my cosplay. It's like okay. this big. Nice. It's the Sword of Dios from Revolutionary Girl Beats Nine. Okay, cool. Uh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. It mostly just hangs on my wall. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pop in chat. Hello to One Inch Heroes. Uh, hello to Lance, who's in Australia. Hey, Lance. Um, hello to Jeff and to Jason. Jason says he 3D printed some Tatooine-themed buildings. Love what 3D printing can do. Excellent. Um, so, yep. cool. I feel like we should start painting. Oh, you want to start painting already? Okay, well, <laughs> what we'll do is we'll jump into... Um, I'm working on this, yeah, so which that, has already been started. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, we've got some uh, photos I took uh, last night as I was preparing the building. Oh, okay. So uh, if we can jump to those, get Leona. Those, get those on screen somehow. So last week I... Um, oh, wrong one. Oh. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. But uh, last week I uh, showed everybody the blue... Uh, electrical junction box that um, that I picked up from a local hardware store. Okay. And uh, that's what this is. So if, oh, you can, okay. if you can spin it around and show yeah. people the bright blue. But uh, yeah, when I started to work on it last night, I grabbed a, uh, the basically the Citadel miniatures holder box and just cut it open. So I had some cardboard to work with. Uh, and then on the next next picture, there we go. Uh, so just use the steel rule and a pencil to mark out sort of what I wanted. Uh, on the next photo, I think we've got, there we go, I drew out a, a simple doorway. Just doors and... Yep. So the next one is two of those cut out. And the reason I, I've got two there is so that I could... Stack them? Stack them and get a little bit of extra depth. Um, so there they are on the, attached to the junction box there. And in front, they use on the piece of the cardboard to um, basically create like a curtain. Oh, okay. um, so I have that in my hand here at the oh, moment. Okay. But uh, the next photo, so I mentioned uh, picking up some bonds to plastic Krylon uh, spray paint. Yep. So this is important because that blue plastic for the, uh, the junction box doesn't like to have anything sticking to it. No, it's, yeah. So uh, that's great for that. Then I, because I wanted the, um, the areas that you see in blue there uh, to not have texture on them, I you masked them off. Just them off with yep. painter's tape. Blue painter's tape. And uh, then the final one there is I hit them with this Rust-Oleum multicolor textured paint. Um, and then the final product yep. just that's sort of has this sandy stone look to it. So you can see the blue on the inside, but if you're looking at it, you know, yep. straight on, you can't you can't really see much in the way of blue still there. Yeah, there's a little um, bit underneath some of those flaps, but a little bit, yeah. You but you get that with a paintbrush, so yeah. So we've got that. Uh, what we're going to be doing, uh, or what Carrie's going to be doing, is uh, doing some weathering around the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, where dust and um, debris grime. and grime would sort of accumulate, uh, and also up on the top here. These panels. Yep. So I'm going to paint those silver. Okay. And then we'll put a quick I will wash go, over them. Since it's your thing, I'm going by your instructions. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, start with the silver then. Okay, we'll start with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, what I figured we'd do after we've got the grime and the. Well, actually, probably before we do the grime, we'll do a little uh, red triangle oh, on okay. there. 
kind of like we did on the side of the um, ATRT oh, okay. um, vehicle. So just a little sort of subtle connection to it and saying, well, Right, this, this, is, is, this is the same. Yeah, this is a, a similar same. thing. This is a, maybe a little sort of rebel stronghold. Not mm -hmm. stronghold, but uh, it's a little bit small for a stronghold. But a little bit. A little rebel safe maybe, house. Maybe, yeah, safe house or, or part of a larger complex anyway. Yeah, exactly. So I brought along a few other things, uh, just random stuff that I had lying around uh, at home. Or oh, the other thing that we're going to do, sorry, before I get into the random stuff, is uh, grab two pieces here from uh, the um, one of the Mantic uh, terrain sprues from uh, the Battle Zone set. So I have a ladder and uh, kind of like a, an antenna kind of piece. So I've got these separate, okay. so that we can paint these up and glue them to the oh. to that building. And that's why we have. Maxi Cure Extra Thick yep. <laughs> 10 to 25 second glue. So that's something uh, you don't get on your hands, hopefully. <laughs> you can. It's I just, mean, yeah. It's, just, it's, well, it's, it's an important thing with, um, with miniature painting or terrain building and that sort of thing. You are going to get glue on your hands. Yeah. And your fingers are going to stick together. <laughs> just going to happen. I mean, look, I've... I've Burned the absolute crap out of my hands on more than a few occasions working on cosplay with hot glue. So oh yeah, can't be any worse than that, really. This is true. This is true. So, um, hello to Zach, who is watching from Alaska. Rick is watching. Rick is watching. What's up? You slacking off a gamma hey, already? Hey, boss. <laughs> Hopefully it's all going fine. Um, <laughs> and uh, the folks at Mini Painting Studio say I make my terrain out of collected cat hair. That's yeah. fair. I've got two cats at home, so. You can do it. You can spin lots of wonderful things out of that. I feel like at this point I could make a whole new cat out <laughs> of the cat hair that I brush I'm off. Sure, you of. could. You should. You should collect it up and make a cat out of it. <laughs> and make your other cats jealous. <laughs> Spend all your time with them. They're already jealous of each other. Ah, okay, that's good. What's uh, up to Timothy and uh, Carl, also in in chat? Cool. And yeah, if I don't know what was caught at the start of this because we had a technical hiccup, but. Um, Still working on the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop, so if anyone in chat uh, has any questions for me regarding uh, that book, um, hit me up because I'm, I'm trying trying to watch chat while I'm while I'm painting this. <laughs> cool. Well, while, while you're painting that and uh, keeping an eye on the chat, I'm going to talk about a few other things. Um, I picked up, I brought this along. This is a piece of uh, green insulation foam. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about an inch thick, maybe three quarters of an inch. But uh, this is a great material for making a lot of uh, terrain. In the Star Wars Legion uh, sort of getting started guide, uh -huh. uh, that it kind of comes in the, the Star Wars Legion box, the core set, they have some terrain at the back that's uh, made from this foam or made from the pink version of this foam. Okay. Uh, it's great because it's very easy, it's very sturdy. It's pretty cheap, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you can buy it in. You buy it in eight foot sheets. Okay. Eight foot by eight foot by four foot. And you just go to like a Home Depot for Home that. Home Depot, that sort of thing. Home Depot or Lowe's, and it costs about. I think it's about forty five, fifty dollars for a sheet that size. And that's a lot. That'll that'll. That's, that's a hell of a lot. As far as painting terrain yeah. is concerned. Oh yeah, you can make a ton of terrain out of that. But uh, I also brought along. Uh, this is one of the, the tools that I use to cut this sort of foam. Okay. Uh, basically, it's a, a box cutter, but with an extendable snap-off blade, uh -huh. so that you've got a lot of knife. A lot of knife. A lot to of work knife with. to work with. You can see that. Look at that <laughs> shot. Can we do that in close cam? <laughs> Look at this. So, uh, but yeah. So you can cut through the cut through the foam quite well, and you get that lovely squeaking sound. Mm. You hear that? Like, like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. Just delicious. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, and the other thing you can do with this foam is, if you have a sharp um, knife, you can carve it really well. Okay. Just get get those good uh, exacto knives. Yep. So you can carve all sorts of textures in there. You can make a um, sort of brick kind of texture if you want, or. Do that sort of thing, nice and quickly. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with this foam. Obviously, these bricks are enormous. Right. But, but the thing is, you can start enormous and basically just and work your way down. So slowly work your way down. Yep. 
but uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, using the, the lovely insulation foam, uh, nice and dense. So that's Sturdy. a great, great thing that'll to last you. Hmm? That'll last you a while. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Unless you're doing a large uh, table project okay. where you need to build yeah. uh, hills and rocky outcroppings, that sort of thing. So we've got that. Uh, one thing. One thing I brought in that I really enjoy sort of doing from my basement uh, is spackle. this. Yeah, it's spackle, but it's lightweight spackle. Okay. So this um, tub actually feels like it's empty, but it's not. It's probably been about a third of the tub left. But um, rather than having the the heavy um, heavy spackle that you either mix uh -huh. or uh, squeeze out of a tube or dig out of a tub. Right. Um, this one is very, very easy to use. Dries quite uh, a lot faster nice. than the heavy spackle. And you can just sort of turn that into rock formations or whatnot. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. Yeah, if you've, um, let's say for example, you've got the uh, one of these huge pieces of. Is that sound again? <laughs> now, you saw my complete lack of knife safety there. Don't do that at home. <laughs> but if you were to stack. The um, there we go, stacked foam like this. Glue that together and sort of. Glue those together, and you wanted to um, have this actually be, have that be a smooth. Right, you fill that thing. in with the spackle. Yeah, you can trim this down, fill it in with a strip of the, the foam, and then <coughs> oh, uh, spread the spackle over that. Nice. Uh, to smooth things out. And nice. it's sandable, uh, but I'm a big fan of the lightweight spackle yeah, compound. Spackle. So if you can get a hold of that. Uh, what are some other things? Oh, something that's great for one of those little rocky formations, particularly on hills. I'll bring that back. Is are these uh, bark chips? Oh, so like mulch? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So this is um, soil cover. Soil yeah, cover. This is mulch. Forest bark. Basically. Yeah. I learned recently that I have too much of that around uh, my house and yeah. that I need to get rid of it because if you have a little too much of that around your house, it attracts termites. Oh. So I gotta get rid of that because I, I don't want yeah. termites. Yeah, definitely <coughs> Mark says he finished his first terrain piece for Legion on the weekend made from the round base from Pop Up Pirates and a Rebel Snow, Rebel Snow Speeder model. Oh cool. Nice. Excellent. Was it a crash speeder? Oh, uh, that's a good question. That's a tell us why. A crash speeder. But yeah, you can see on the um, on the camera there that uh, that stack of chips. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, just works well as a nice sort of slate rock formation on the side of a hill. So that's something. I was thinking I like you were going to pull out um, like the pebbles that you can buy for. Like fish tanks, but I know okay. you have something else for fish tanks in that. I do have something else for fish tanks in the mystery box. And this is an enormous piece. Enormous. Okay. <laughs> but now, look at that, it's taller than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this one here, <laughs> obviously you can get all sorts of aquarium plants. Right. That sort of thing. And all sorts of colors, too. Yep. So this one I actually used recently on a, uh, a forest table. Okay these little strands here. And you basically just clip them into... Just clip them into individual pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, before I clipped them, I sprayed them. Uh, because obviously it's bright, right. bright green. It's not is, really natural. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can still have bright green, but it, it can't look glossy and yeah, plasticky. Yeah, right. So I, I sprayed these a green. I actually used it like a neutral green, um, kind of like a camouflage kind of colors. Right. Uh, sprayed it over, clipped them at each sort of individual spot. Instead, I'm going to use a knife in a very unsafe fashion. <laughs> Don't do this at Don't home. Don't do this at home. Uh, Wyatt says so. aquarium plants look very alien. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot, lot of, of opportunities for like uh, sci-fi sort of, or or even some some fantasy stuff. Yep. With, with some of the crazy colors you can buy for fish tank. Exactly. Plants. Some of the purples and the the pinks are fantastic for sci-fi worlds. But uh, yeah, these ones are great for that sort of thing. So there's a really a wide mix of things that you can do for your terrain building. Uh, as you can see, you can really get a clump of these. 
on a table. Mm. You've got a fantastic little oh, sort of phone section. Yeah. So I should have brought my clippers for these, but instead. <laughs> I promise not to cut myself on camera. Are you sure that's a promise you're going to be able to keep? No. Nope. <laughs> not at all. It's funny, I did some uh, YouTube videos a couple of years ago yeah. where I was building a, uh, a large piece. It was a Warlord Titan, okay. which is a huge resin model. It's about this tall. And I think three, maybe four times during the series of videos I did, you like I cut you myself on, on screen. Nice. Always so good. Like, oh, hang on a second. Right. Blink. <laughs> Stop that video. Suffer for passion, right? Oh, yeah. Are we doing the front door also for uh, silver? For the, no, not okay. silver. The front door, we'll do... Um, actually, I'll get you to paint the top and the bottom of that. Sort of like a little strip at the top and bottom. Okay. Black. Okay. Because I've got the... This is the, the little oh. piece that's going to be the, uh, the curtain. Okay. So I'll paint the curtain while you paint the whole building. All right. How does that sound? That seems like a totally fair, totally fair division exchange. of <laughs> division of labor. Of labor here. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> Did you want to paint the curtain? And no, no, I'm good. Paint. I'm I good. So. I was confident. So I will jump in there. Just put that to the side. Uh, one of the things I'll do as well is give a shout out to a Facebook group that people who are watching the show might like to see uh, or join. It's called uh, Star Wars Legion Unofficial Terrain Group. So uh, it's it's just a Facebook group for painting terrain in Star Wars Legion. Yep, so there we go. It's, uh, that's, uh, nice. So it's got the longest name ever for a Facebook <laughs> group. But uh, yeah, so if you go and check that out, uh, I think my friend uh, Sean Morris put that together. Nice. Uh, Sean is a uh, school principal by day and a an avid terrain builder by by night. Nice. And he's done uh, done a couple of really nice Star Wars tables. And, uh, he was sort of inspired to start that. But yeah, it's it's all about terrain building. Uh, so if you're thinking of doing some terrain building, or if you've done some terrain building for Star Wars Legion already, or show or whatever, up. Yeah, definitely I mean, head to that group, join up. Uh, also, yeah, feel free to. Uh, head to Painting Happy Little Minis. Yay! Uh, our group, uh, Facebook group on uh, on Facebook. On Facebook. Because as opposed to redundancy somewhere else. Is, uh, is super important. Uh, Carl in chat says he used aquarium pla plants for basing a uh, basing a weird water monster off of to hide its strings. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. There's a lot of cool things you can do with uh, aquarium plants. It's interesting because, like, in the games that I've played, um, we've never really used terrain. We've used, like, a lot of uh, those dry erase grids and whatnot. Right. Okay. Because, um, yeah. like, I don't do wargaming or anything like that. And I yeah. feel like, you know, you get some people in RPGs that are into doing terrain and whatnot. Um, yep. But I feel like that's definitely more of like a wargaming scene sort of deal. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong about that. No, no. I think you're. Uh, I think you're really absolutely right. I mean, with uh, there are war games that use a lot of um, we call it sort of area terrain. Okay. So it's the area, this sort of the footprint of the terrain that is the important part. Right. Rather than the. Um, What's actually on it? Yeah. Rather than the the, the height, the verticality of it. So uh, games like uh, War Machine, for example, from uh, Privateer Press, mm -hmm. can certainly be played on 2D terrain. Okay. And there are companies out there that, that print, uh, they'll print um, gaming tables on like mouse pad, oh, mouse okay. pads sort nice. of thing. Nice. You just roll it out. And you can roll that out, and then um, then they'll have terrain that is also printed on the the same material, nice. the neoprene material. Um, no, so that's cool. Yeah, I think it's a, there's, you've got that sort of thing. Uh, for me, very much so though, uh, playing a war game is about creating the scene and building the world. Right. Uh, so three-dimensional terrain is very important for, for me and for a lot of other war gamers as well. It's, it's, it's that thing that grabs you. It's, 
it's that cinematic look. Yeah, I mean, I remember as a kid, um, like really not having any idea what Warhammer or anything like that was. But I remember um, there was a mall I used to go to that had a games workshop in it. Right. And so they had, you know, Warhammer just sort of set up permanently. Yep. Um, and I always thought it was really cool to like go in there and, and look at, at the sets and whatnot. But if I was like eight years old and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is. Sure. This isn't Pokemon. Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, it's, uh, vi it's visually very stunning. I think uh, building terrain can, can be a lot of work as well. I feel like it's a lot of work, but it's also probably like, it seems like it would be very therapeutic. Yeah. Um, so, okay, here's, here's where oh, we're yeah. at. Do we need the spots larger on no, the No, that's, okay. that's perfect because, uh, so yeah, looking at the, it's, um, just here we've got the, Terry's just painted some black stripes across the top and bottom. This here is still the, um, the primer, mm -hmm. the monster plastic primer. And I've just finished painting the, uh, the, the curtain. curtain. There's a slide in there. Push that in. I'll end up gluing this in. But uh. Scott, yes, this is a junction box. Um, yep. Thank you for joining us. Better late than never, as always. Um, but yes, um, you can go back and watch the the VOD uh, of his whole process at, at priming this thing for today. But yeah, it's a junction yep. box. Nice, simple junction box. It's when you hit it with that textured spray, it just really gives you that one of those sort of desert feels. Let me give you that. Ah, uh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think it's got some great yeah. sort of look there. Uh, if you want to take some of the gnome oil. Oh yeah, yeah. we're going to start griming this up. Actually, with, with the gnome oil, if we just use that on the uh, silver parts. Okay. Uh, and while you're working on that, I'm going to get started on these. So is this just sort that. of doing like an ink wash on these? Yeah, okay. doing ink wash over that. So I've got the two parts here from the uh, Mantic uh, Battle Zone set. Nice. And I'll just quick dry brush on these. I'll hit them with a little wash. And Timothy sort of asks, what is your opinion on Imperial Terrain 3D printed stuff? Oh, is that uh, just in general or... Is that a particular company? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, oh, no, no, that's what, just what I'm asking. Asking. Yes. Who was it again? Sorry. Timothy. Timothy. Uh, what do I think about printing? If, I, if it's talking about printing imperial terrain, uh, yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, same sort of thing with um, printing rebel terrain or it's sort of any terrain that. 3D printing really lends itself a little bit, little bit more to uh, organic shapes. Okay. Uh, on Thursday, we're going to be painting up some uh, laser-cut MDF terrain, Ooh. which is uh, it's been sort of I'm not going to say all the rage, but it's been all the rage. Okay. <laughs> uh, in wargaming for quite a few years now, but we're getting some stuff. Uh, hopefully, it'll be arriving tomorrow from uh, Death Ray Designs, who are Ooh. down in uh, North Carolina. Uh, Timothy says uh, Imperial Terrain is a company. Okay, I have not seen that at all. So, so I can't, no opinion. I can't comment specifically, sorry. No comment. Um, yet. Yet. No. But uh, yeah, there are lots of, lots of great companies out there designing awesome things. As I said before, with, the, with 3D printing, it's just allowed a lot of creative people to do some really wonderful things. Yeah, I just... just it's something that I wish I could do, um, but I have zero artistic skills whatsoever. Um, <laughs> people are like, oh, you can just like put a 3D model and then you know, print it. And I'm like, I, I can't 3D model. It's the creating. I can barely 2D <laughs> model. Like, <laughs> I can't draw. <laughs> this is why I'm a writer. <laughs> You're talking about You'd be, you'd be printing uh, 3D stickmen? Yeah, basically. Yeah, me too. 
basically Me that. Too. Though, of course, there are plenty of people um, who sell basically like the... Whoop. Good thing there's not oh. much in there so that I can knock it over twice and that not be a problem. Um, Amazing. <laughs> actually, speaking of 3D printed stuff, I have actually seen a 3D printed, uh, like, wash holder. Oh, okay. So nice. So it, hold, it holds the wash and holds the lid open for you. Nice. And has a large base, so it's impossible to knock it over. <laughs> um, we should get some of those. We maybe. should get some yep. of those. You think? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've, I've seen I've seen people in like Etsy, yep. basically sell like patterns. Right. Um, S so like STL you, files. yeah. So yep. it's like you pay them like they did the work, but they're selling you the file. Usually it's only a couple of bucks because then it's like you got to pay for the actual printing itself, and presumably yep. you've paid a lot for an actual printer yep. as well. Yeah. Um, Though a lot of printers in general have gotten far cheaper than they were even just a couple of years ago. Yeah. There's All very right. definitely a lot of, uh, there's a wide variety of printers out there. Uh, and it sort of approaches to the printing. But uh, then there are the companies like uh, Shapeways. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Shapeways. Nope. Shapeways are a, uh, are a printing company, basically a printing house. Uh, and marketplace things. Okay. So if you don't have a, a 3D printer, you can go to uh, Shapeways, like shapeways.com, and have a look around on there and look through their marketplace. And there'll be lots of different uh, sellers uh, or designers and artists and that sort of thing who are all uh, selling prints, essentially. Right. So you pay the, rather than paying five dollars for the file and printing it yourself you might pay fifteen dollars for right. the print okay that's not bad and then a week or two later it'll turn up on your doorstep nice so, uh, cool. yeah timothy says he's just asking about imperial terrain because he's deep into dragonlock dungeon terrain didn't know if we had experience with the imperial terrain right. point. no sadly uh, we don't all right so did the wash okay Next. cool the next thing, I'm going to, um, because I haven't worked with that, uh, with the textured paint mm -hmm. spray before, I probably should have tested something <laughs> beforehand, shouldn't I? But We're kind of flying by the seat of our You know me, here. that's how I like to make it up as you go right. along. Um, I'm just going to grab that for a sec, and I'll bring it under the camera here. So I'm just going to sort of paint it on this side here, so you get an right. idea of what I'm thinking. Um, so I'm getting out using Agrex Earthshade wash here. Just going around, you can use like strong tone from Army Painter right. or um, use a mixing medium to sort of thin down some of your own paints, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, but basically, it's going to be in the corners of the, the building. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, a, it's a, uh, yeah. it doesn't know where to focus. It's trying to focus on the white, that's what it's trying to do. Oh, I can't cover up enough of it. But yeah, so I've got a line across there. And what I'm going to do to make that sort of look less obvious is just sort of dab along there okay. with, a, so I, with a slightly sort of thinner, or even just some water across the top of that. Just to sort of smudge it? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That kind of goes in there. So basically, we're just weathering this building at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's been sitting. Sitting around for a long time, possibly centuries, but you never know in the mm. Star Wars universe. That's true. So. <laughs> I feel like you know, you look at a lot of buildings in the in the Star Wars universe where they're like, "We just built this," and I'm like, "That looks old." Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it's that uh, the thing about what's just. Mm -hmm. How recent is recent? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Do you see that? Mm. So, I will hand this um, over. I will try. <laughs> An attempt will be made. Hopefully, oh, I don't knock the wash over. You never know. It might happen. That's okay. We get to leave it through. Yeah, exactly. Someone <laughs> else has to clean it up. Oh, it's going to be Leona. 
We don't want to no, do that. No, I don't want to be mean to Leona. No, I got to come back on Thursday. Oh, okay. So you don't get to be mean to Leona. No. <laughs> Not at all. Okay, so while you're uh, doing that and doing the grunging up there, uh, I've taken these and oh, there we go. Run a uh, run that Agrax Earthshade wash over there. So what I'm going to do now is just, oh, it's almost dry on that one. Just hit it with a light dry brush of silver. Says, silver, but it's bright silver. It says aluminum. Oh no, this one says aluminum. Aluminum. <laughs> it's a completely different metal. Right. So a little bit of that on the palette. Hey James, there. James is watching okay. on his lunch break. Hey James, thanks for joining us. So, I see that not coming in yet. Okay, so just yeah, hitting with a little bit of the silver, just catching the edges, a few streaks, which would kind of represent. The sort of dings and nicks across the. Where is it? There it is. There's the brush I was looking for. Mini painting, painting studio says Leona for mayor. I yeah, agree. Yeah, for sure. Who run Bada Town? Leona run Bada Town. <laughs> <laughs> In the uh, in the Star Wars Legion box, it comes with a whole bunch of um, barricades. Mm -hmm. Little barricades. I think it's like eight or nine of them, something like that. Okay. And uh, which are fine for sort of representing light cover. Okay. On the tabletop. Right. Uh, something like this gives us a line of sight blocking terrain. Yeah. So it's not really. I guess it's not really cover for a squad. But no, but it would it would certainly interfere with the ability to see certain things. Yeah, for, for them to shoot out or for other people to shoot at them. So if you're trying to keep something safe, trying to keep it uh, in a good yeah. spot, that's a good one. Nice. At the moment, as we certainly haven't uh, built any terrain that's going to be covering something like the ATST. No. At uh, eight and a half inches tall. It's a it's a big one. It is. So we'll have to uh, have to think about that. <laughs> One thing that uh, I just remembered as well is uh, today, this morning, uh, Fantasy Flight um, announced they're releasing two gaming mats. Okay, for Legion? For Legion, yeah. Specifically, sort of Legion style. I'm just going to push that that way. This? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I'm not doing a bad job. It's okay. You're doing just fine. <laughs> Fuck the <this> job. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, two gaming mats. Uh, one of them, uh, basically both of them, are for like a desert kind of situation. Okay, so like Tatooine, basically. Yeah, Tatooine. Uh, again, Tatooine, uh, Jeddah, Jakku. Jakku, pro probably going to be a popular one for, for this game. I, I think so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, they've re released those two. There are two, uh, they're both three by three, three foot by three foot okay. mats uh, that are in the Neoprene, the mouse pad, That's the mouse pad material, yeah. uh, and you could actually slide them together. Oh, okay. To have two different things. So one of them is kind of like a, a junkyard. It's a different so really, Jack who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, the other one is like a, a ruin. There's a ruined building, a ruined temple kind of setup. Okay. Kind of set up. So uh, awesome. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I think um, hopefully Rick is going to be able to get those from FFG for us to give away with all of this. Send us things. More things, send us things. More things to give away. Uh, I haven't mentioned that yet. So on our on the Game Trade Media Facebook page, if you head there, uh, pinned at the top is the post about winning all of the Star Wars Legion stuff that we've been painting, as well as the terrain mm. being painted by Carrie here. Wow. 
Wow. This is a completely unique piece, never to be found anywhere else in the world. Here's a question from Mark for you, Dave. Yeah. When do you when do you use dry brushing and when and what is it best for? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, dry brushing is a highlighting technique. So it's uh, putting a lighter color over a darker color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's best used, uh, or it's sort of easiest, best used uh, when they, you have a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's a fairly random sort of approach. Right, you're just sort of going at it with no real rhyme or reason. Yeah, oh, when you do that over a smooth surface, a large smooth surface, mm. you're adding a lot of texture to it. Because each time you put down a brush stroke, it's leaving paint. And when you're doing it over the top of it, top of other sort of bits and pieces, it's, it's building up that texture. Okay. So it stops it from being a smooth surface. Right. But if you're doing it over fur or hair or um, lots of folds in cloth. It gives it that depth. Yeah. yeah, you're just adding a, a sort of an extra layer on top of that, and the, the paint catches on those as well, you know, that extra highlight. So anything that has a lot of texture, that's uh, it's where a, I it's usually good go, I go to uh, dry brushing for that. This one here, where I've got sort of, I had sort of long, sort of straight surfaces on the, um, on the aerial here, the antenna, uh, but when I was dry brushing, I dry brushed across Right. Area rather than lengthways, so they could catch these little pieces of texture close to each other. So that's nice. that's yeah. really when I when I use uh, use dry brushing. Uh, it's also a quick way to put down a lot of paint. <laughs> so if you don't have a, a spray can or an airbrush, um, that's it's something that you can use. Yeah. If you do want to. If you do want to add that texture to a surface, dry brushing is another way to do that. Right. So would you say dry brushing is just sort of like almost a, a different technique to sort of get the same, I guess, kind of look that like an ink wash would provide in some similar situations? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, going to get a, you're going to get a slightly different finish. Generally, an ink wash will give you a, a smoother finish than, right. than a dry brush will. But uh, doing a wash, is working the other way. So you start with the mid-tone and you wash with a, you wash a darker with the dark. tone. Yeah. So if you have a lot of texture and you're starting with a mid-tone and you dry brush a darker tone mm -hmm. on there, you start to flatten out that texture. Right, okay. Visually. Right. So you always gotta work out what you're trying to do. Are you trying to enhance, are you trying to add highlights? Right. Or add shadow? Okay. Work out which one's better for the sort of each way, um, and you can do similar sorts of things with with washes and and dry brushing in uh, creating transitions, color transitions. Right. So if you start with a um, with a purple, and you want it to go to a light blue, you could dry brush through those highlight stages. Okay. And it, it gives it a more cohesive. Yeah, it, it, you can. It's a little bit easier to sort of build through that than it is to spend a lot of time with um, wet blending, or sort of which is working where while the paint is still wet on the model. Yeah, and that, that means you got to work thing. fast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do not work fast. And washes, it's about that would be about um, sort of building. Building uh, layers. Or so, on. Yeah, building again, building layers. But so you start with your purple in that case, and no, you start with your blue in that case, and then. Build into the purple. Add those um, layers so that you got the purple right down at the end. Um, nice. Definitely Jeremy my says, hand gestures have helped explain those. Yeah. Concept. <laughs> Jeremy says, I'm going to end up with 24 of barricades, two sets, and two core boxes. And for some reason, I ordered the extra run from Fantasy Flight as well. Oh, what? Off to spend more money on mats. Yeah. <laughs> You can end up running a whole tournament in your house hey. with that many, uh, that many barricades. Just get some old mats, you'll be all good. Right. <laughs> and three by three, that's a pretty decent, like, oh, that's a nice sort of that's a good playing surface. Yeah. So you can fit that in, they, they can fit a lot of tables in stores, you can have a lot of people oh, playing yeah. at home. Absolutely. Um, that'd be great. Definitely the, there you go. How do you think that's looking? 
Nothing like that? I don't know. Uh, you tell me, man. I'm just... Oh, no, no. Do, do you think it looks like a building? I think it certainly looks like a building. Does it look more like a building than a junction box? I think... I mean, I thought it looked more like a building than a junction box when you brought it in here. I thought this was like an official piece, and you were like, it's a junction box. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. Would not have guessed unless I l like surprising. looked on the inside. Yeah. But this is also, like, this is... Like, I, I play... I play... I ultimately still play more video games than I play board games. Okay. Um, so, and even when it comes to tabletop, um, the minis thing is like not my big scene. Right. Yep. I've, I've got I've got a uh, I've got some friends coming over for, for some D and D on Friday. Which cool. Is very exciting. We are picking up our, our campaign in which I have a tiefling bard. Okay. Um, which is super fun. Nice. But um, yeah. Um, like when it comes to minis, like I haven't really like I don't have my own set of paints at home yet. Right. Okay. Um, because I'm not really doing enough of that stuff quite yet. Yep. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe someday. Maybe we'll you, have to, you, we'll have and, to you and Rick have been slowly introducing slowly me to this world. So yeah. Well, I think I the next step is we need to uh, need to talk to Rick about picking up a set of paints. Oh, okay. I think we can do that. Okay. We should be able to. <laughs> One thing I just want to do just quickly is this is looking great. Okay. You say so. Happy with how it's done. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> just fine. Just fine. Don't really go on there. Um, now I can't remember the name of the sort of the language or the written language. Uh, Arabish. Is it Arabish? Yeah. Okay. There we go. It's good to have Star Wars. I've got. Uh, I've Xbox. got my little. You can kind of see it. I have a. I have a tattoo on my wrist of my little. My little Tie Fighter. Awesome. So, so we'll my mom was not happy okay. about that. I tell you <laughs> what, <laughs> so I've got look, I've got two tattoos on my back, and I have one large one on my arm here. Um, but it was the one on the wrist. That she it was the one with? on the wrist because right. she has to see it all the time. All right, like, okay. oh, you know, the rest <laughs> are mostly covered up. But like, I, this was this was my most recent one. This was my birthday present to myself. I actually oh, got nice. this like the day after my birthday um, this past December. And um, the the most recent time I I hung out with my mom was the first time she saw this, and she was like, "Are you are you done? Are you done with those yet?" And I'm like, "No, sorry, mom. <laughs> that's a promise I can't keep." But that's cool. James says nine minutes till work time. Boo to work Boo. time. Working stinks. You were thinking that was only to get back to work, didn't you? I guess. I gotta, you know, I've got, uh, I think I'm gonna work on my article on uh, Settlers of Catan today. Oh, so cool. Excellent. It'll be good, it'll be a fun time. Speaking of articles, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think I have mentioned it on the show. Um, I've been talking with Jerome mm -hmm. from uh, Game Trade Me Magazine. Okay. And uh, we're gonna start doing some Painting Happy Little Minis articles Cute. in Game Trade Magazine. Nice. So we'll do things like, Actually, we'll throw this yeah. out to the chat and see what people think. Of um, course, yeah. Actually, what, well, what do you want? Well, yeah. What do you want covered <laughs> in a minis article on in the Game Trade Media magazine? Well, I was going to say one of the things that I'm thinking about for as, as doing is uh, doing a. We'll do basically each article has three sections mm -hmm. to it. One is like how to paint white or okay. how to paint red. Uh, pick a color. Right. You know, color, color. Then there'll be uh, like an advanced painting technique oh, okay. that we can tie to whatever the model is that we're using okay. for that. So like dry brushing or something. So like could, that. Uh, oh no, um, it might be like uh, actually the way we do yeah. it. It could be like uh, red. Uh -huh. and we paint a red cloak mm -hmm. on a miniature. Then the advanced technique would be how we'd get sort of a muddied look oh, around okay. the bottom, nice. which could also include. Dry brushing, mm -hmm. which would be the sort of the standard technique that would say how to paint red, mm -hmm. dry brushing, and something advanced. Okay. As part of a like a spread. Nice. Yeah. So does that sound cool? Would people be interested in seeing that, Is that sort what of thing? What you in, want, chat? In game trade me. <laughs> What's going on in chat? Mark says. Chat. Talk to us. Mark <laughs> is talking about the uh, the mat for Star Wars Legion. Uh, three by three is a decent sized mat. Yep. There's a cynical debate about Fantasy Flight trying to make more bucks, but I'm looking at it that Fantasy Flight is pushing for the co-op gameplay and building a lot on community play, which makes me stoked about the whole thing. Cool. And Jeremy says, 
Yes, very interested in the magazine on it, so can't wait. Cool. Super cool. Excellent. Well, I, I, I'm just going to say one thing as well is that I see people are a business. Uh -huh. They want to stay in business. So selling more products will help them <laughs> is the stay key in business. To staying in business. Otherwise, you won't have really cool stuff like Star Wars Legion. Right. And I've got, uh, yeah. we, I Makes guess the sense. last time I was on the movies, we was when we did a different Fantasy Flight game, which was Fallout. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And of course, they are getting ready, I, I, maybe it's already out. I know the last time I looked, which was like, admittedly a couple months ago, they were getting ready to publish the Fallout Wargaming. Yeah, um, from Modifius. Mm -hmm. That is very soon. I think I... they've just been taking pre-orders for it. Yeah, um... I've very much been like, uh, I don't know if like Warhammer really appeals to sort of my sensibilities or something like that. And then of course here they come, oh, we're doing a war game based on Fallout. And I'm like, damn it, we're we getting money your, for this. We're getting based on one of your favorite video yeah, games, exactly. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the models for that look fantastic. So quite exciting. Yeah, everyone is uh, super interested in the, um, in the article, article for, in for Game Trade. Um, cool. James says, I would love to write for it. Oh, so, cool. oh yeah. I didn't um, even thought of that. Yes, the authors. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, Jeremy says, even if it is a money grab for them, uh, for Fantasy Flight, it provides the pieces to get people not into tabletop, um, into tabletop without the skill overhead. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's, like, that's, I think, a big barrier for a lot of people, um, particularly when it comes to, to war games, is, yeah. at least from my perspective, as someone who is like, I've never played Warhammer. Yeah. You know, I've never really played a war game. I have a lot of friends who are very into it, um, but it's not something I've ever done. And for me, it's like, I see those big Warhammer setups at, at the stores and like Games Workshop and whatnot, and all I see are like, dollar signs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my friend... I say uh, again, they're a business. They yeah, gotta say, no, no just absolutely. <laughs> and like, it's, it's important. And obviously that much is, is worth that much money. Um, but yeah, uh, one of my, my, good, my good buddy, Alex, who um, wrote our Warhammer article, because I was like, I don't really know anything about Warhammer. <laughs> I'd have to do a lot of research and talk to a lot of people. You do it. Um, <laughs> nice. So, um, like, the Warhammer article came in, and I'm looking at some of these, you know, so-called minis that are, like, this tall yep. um, and, you know, are several hundred dollars sometimes yep. for one one piece to an army. And I'm just, like, for me, that's that's... I think that's the, the thing I'm going to jump in here and say mm -hmm. is, is talk about the hobby aspect. Sure. Um, hobby, hobbies sort of in and of themselves, regardless of what hobby is, is um, something that you'd spend all of your free time and all of your free cash yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, Look, I cosplay. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm saying, like, boy, Warhammer costs a lot of money. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh, I'm spending all this money on fabric for my next Digimon costume. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So, so it, it, it's one of those things that to to each his own. Very much. To each your own. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to spend money on it, just fine. I know that I've I've you know, thousands of hours oh, sure. out of my thousands of dollars money sure. spent for sure. Uh, so, but I it's do. All good, I, but, yeah. You know, I I'm I'm glad that companies like Fantasy Flight are doing these sort of like prefab mats and, oh, yeah. and whatnot because for people who are like, oh, I want to do this, but I really don't have the money. Or the time to dedicate to this. To spend um, on uh, getting all the, make sure you buy the right junction boxes right, exactly. and buy the right. <laughs> <laughs> get, um, get the large sheets of foam. How am I going to get an eight foot by four foot sheet of uh, foam? Right, home? right. <laughs> no, it, yeah. it's certainly you know it's it's providing the opportunity to people who want to do this who may not otherwise have that opportunity. And I think that's important because tabletop is for everyone. Um, yep. And the cool thing is that for those of us who do really enjoy. Uh, building and painting and sort of exploring that sort of aspect as mm -hmm. well. Because we can take all that stuff and just add to it. Right, absolutely. Add to it. Yeah, Mark says, uh, doesn't see it as a money grab, loving the push by Fantasy Flight for players to get together and share resources. Yep. And James asks if you have seen his work and do you think he could make a good article? Uh, I'm going to say right at the moment I am uh, drawing a blank on it, but... Um, We'll look it up. Send, send us a message. Or yeah, drop us, drop us a line on the Facebook and be like, here's my stuff. Let me write about minis for you. We'll talk about it for sure. Uh, cool. Okay. So that looks. There we go. 
we're um, we're almost at time. Uh, so there we go. So look at that. Yeah. I'm gonna. Where should I put it? Right in the middle there. Actually, no, I'll put it down here. There we go. Yeah. Very good. And then we can get that camera on it. Yep. There we go. Okay. Nice. Right back here. You can see all of my stuff scattered <laughs> massively all over the table. <laughs> I feel terrible. Um, so yeah, I'm putting it up over there. Very cool. Does everybody think that works? As yeah, a, uh, the, do, do you still see a junction box in that at this point? As soon as you stick those next to it. Don't look around the corner. He's behind you. Oh, very, very yep. cool. So that's great. I think, uh, yeah, it's really super simple. As you, as you saw, we went, just went through junction box, stuck some cardboard to it, yep. uh, sprayed it. Knowing some things like uh, right. what you can spray it with right. is important. So anything that's, um, generally anything that's a, a hard, shiny plastic, right. hit it with that bonds to plastic right. stuff first. Yeah, because otherwise it won't stick to it. Exactly. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, okay, so we started with the junction box. Yep. That's really only a couple of bucks at yep. a hardware store. Um, presumably if you're painting stuff on a regular basis, you've already amassed a good amount of paints. So really yep. at that point, all you're doing is maybe spending another couple of bucks for the stuff you've stuck to it, and then for And the spray sprays, paint. yeah. So if you're doing a whole desert table, a whole um, Jakku table or mm -hmm. Jeddah table, whatever, uh, you pick up like five or six of these, mm -hmm. five or six of these, mm -hmm. and build a little encampment. Yeah. Uh, the spray cans, uh, the spray cans are about $7 each. Okay. Uh, so 14 bucks there. So really at most, in terms of cost-wise, to build yep. a whole encampment of things like this. 50 bucks, yeah. 60 bucks. Yep. yep. And these these two are from uh, the Battle Zone set from Mantic, these two pieces, the, uh, the yeah, ladder uh -huh. and the antenna. Uh, but Mantic are also doing these terrain crates mm -hmm. uh, that are going to stores now. So you can get like a sci-fi terrain crate that has fans and vents nice. and uh, things that look like engines or generators or air conditioning units. Nice. So pick up a box of that for 35 bucks. Okay. And spread it around your yeah. collection of junction boxes. Right. <laughs> uh, there's pi pipes and tubing and things like that. Right. Like that as well. Uh, so you can really go to town and for, I'm going to say 100 bucks, under 100 bucks, right. you can make two three by three tables worth of terrain. Nice. Maybe even three of those. Right. So then you can host an awesome, awesome game Star session. Wars Legion party. Yep, you can do like a little campaign, you can do all sorts um, of stuff. So there we go. I think um, we've hit I think, three o'clock. I think we've hit time, that. yeah. Um, one last thing from Jeremy who says he's been using cheap craft paint for terrain. Helps, yep. <coughs> helps on costs and volume. Yeah, I use cheapo craft paint from like Michael's or uh, AC1. Or because um, yep. it's like you get this much paint for a couple of bucks. Not even. It's usually <laughs> like 97 cents. Um, unless you're getting something with a special finish, like a satin or a glossy finish. But yeah. Um, Excellent. Cool. Well, thanks very much for yeah, joining us today. Thanks for having me. And thanks to you for joining us today. Uh, as uh, as always, so we've been having a little minis, painting with a little yeah. minis. This is Carrie. I'm Dave. Hi. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday. Probably not carry. Probably not, but hopefully in the future, we'll because uh, if you missed that at the start of the show, uh, I'm the assistant editor at Gemstone Publishing and the uh, lead author on the upcoming Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. So if you have any questions for me at any time, uh, feel free to uh, drop me a line on Facebook or, or leave a, a comment on this stream's chat yeah, being sure. like, I want to talk to Carrie about the book. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up on Facebook and it'll be a good time. Awesome. So uh, as we always say, uh, support your local game store. Yes. Head on in. Uh, a week from Thursday is when Star Wars Legion is going to be dropping in the stores. Nice. So it's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, head to your local store. Become part of the community. Uh, and we'll see you fun. next time. I think Leona's chuckling in there. Because <laughs> I'm getting this all in the wrong order. <laughs> I can't do it like Rick does. That's fine. We'll figure it That's out. That's what he's here for, is doing that. We'll see that you cool Thursday. See you Thursday. Bye.
Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.